Right, I'm doing today's topic on hard and soft water. It's not my favourite topic. I may have to refilm this if it doesn't go very well, but we will see how we get on. I'm going to look at the differences between hard and soft water, how you can remove the calcium magnesium ions from hard water, how we treat water that has been through our reservoirs, um, and just basically everything to do with that. As always, since like two weeks ago, I'm going to be adding some past paper questions on the end so you can see the sorts of questions you may be asked. Now first up, soft water. Now soft water lathers really easily. That means it produces lots of foam when you add soap to it. So that's actually quite a good thing because it means that we only need to add like a squirt of fairy liquid in order to cause lots of foaming. However, if you have hard water, what that means is you have magnesium calcium ions present in your water. And what they do is they react and they actually stop your soap from lathering up. So in London, we have really hard water because literally I have to add so many squirts of washing up liquid in order to get any foam and it disappears straight away. And that's because the magnesium and the calcium ions are interfering. So it's actually really frustrating because it's quite expensive and we need more soap in order to get the same amount of cleaning. So it's not a great thing. But you will have heard that there are actually some advantages to having hard water. And that's because they found that having calcium in your water is linked to having a lower risk of heart disease and stronger teeth and stronger bones. So if, if they ask you for an argument between whether you should remove these ions from hard water, on one hand you should say yes because your soap will lather up more, on the other hand you should say no because of the health benefits associated. So it's certainly worth thinking about that. Now how does hard water form? Well basically water that's running off of our mountains from when it rains, some of it goes underground and it washes over rock. That rock is limestone, that is calcium carbonate, and if there's a bit of acidity in that vein it will dissolve away that calcium carbonate leading to some of the calcium ending up in our water, hence creating hard water. Just a couple of words you need to know, which is things like scum and scale. Remember scum is formed when the calcium magnesium ions react with the soap that you've added and the water. So we've talked about scum, now onto scale. This is a white solid produced in things like kettles and that's when the hard water reacts when it gets heated and produces the whole white solid which decreases the efficiency of kettles and again makes them more expensive to run. Now there are two different types of hardness, one is temporary and one is permanent. Temporary hard water is water which when heated can lose its hardness. So we literally heat that hard water and it effectively becomes soft water. Permanent hard water won't do that. Permanent hard water is made from sulphate ions and that is the reason why the hardness does not disappear when you heat it. However, there are two things you can do in order to remove the hardness from both temporary and permanent hard water. Firstly, you can use washing soda which is actually sodium carbonate. What happens here is the carbonate ions will react with the hardness, they'll react with the magnesium and the calcium to form calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, and what that does is it removes the hardness from that water. But it's quite an expensive thing. This is stuff you have to buy in the supermarket and add to your washing machine. So it's quite a faff really, but that is certainly one way in which you can remove hardness. Next up you can use an ion exchange column. What this is, is it has like a layer called a resin which contains sodium ions and the reason why we call it an ion exchange column is because the calcium and magnesium in the hard water will be exchanged for sodium ions and that's literally a three mark question. You, all you need to say is that calcium and magnesium ions are exchanged for the second mark for sodium ions for the third mark. Now because those sodium ions have been added to the resin, they're obviously going to run out so every few weeks or so you're going to have to top up the sodium ions and buy a new packet. Next up we need to talk about water treatment. Now a lot of people use these things like Brita filter jugs and what they do is they have three different components. We have a carbon layer and what that does is it removes excess chlorine. They contain silver and what that will do is it will prevent microbes and bacteria growing in the jug because you don't want them ruining your water. And lastly it will have an ion exchange column which will remove the hardness by again swapping those calcium magnesium ions for sodium ions. Now, it's a bit of a contentious issue, the addition of chlorine. For me, it's a very good idea that chlorine's added because it stops millions of deaths by killing the microbes in water. However, you've got to remember that at high levels, chlorine is very toxic, so it's very important that the amount of chlorine added is a very small amount. Be careful when you th use the words pure water. Now, pure water is not what we get out of bottles and it's not what we get out of our tap. The point is, pure water can only be obtained if you have distilled the water. And that means boiling it first of all, and then allowing it to evaporate and then condense. And at that point it will be totally pure and there won't be any other substances added to it. We choose not to do this regularly because it's such a faff, it's too expensive, there are high energy costs involved. And you'll actually only really find things like distilled pure water in laboratories, which you probably use when you're doing experiments. The teacher will be like, grab the distilled water, and that's because it has been boiled and condensed. And it's very pure.
Finally, we need to talk about the reservoir and what happens to the water from the reservoir um, so it can become perfectly safe for us to drink. First of all, the water will pass through a cage and that will help remove all the wood and all the leaves that might have been falling into the reservoir because obviously we don't want that in our water and it will just catch the very large solids. Next up, the water will enter the settlement tank and that's where the soil and the sand settle out because obviously, again, we don't want those added to our water. Next up, we add aluminium sulphate and lime and what they do is they bind with the really small solid particles now, those which were too small to be caught by either the cage or the settlement tank and they'll remove those tiny solid particles and it will leave a sludge which is kind of like mud which they can remove. And now the final filtration point is when the water passes over sand to remove the very tiny last bits of solid material. So in the exam you'd literally write filter to remove solid particles, there's no need to write any more than that. And although our water made it perfectly clean and transparent with no horrible solid bits, it might not necessarily be without bacteria, so we add chlorine at this point to remove any harmful microbes. Lastly, we check the pH of the water because obviously it needs to be neutral, it needs to be about pH 7 and now it's ready for use. Right, so that's everything. I'm going to attach some questions now to help you. Don't forget to subscribe and comment and any topic requests below and please tell your friends about it too. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. So question four. This question is about water. Rainwater is soft. How is hard water produced from rainwater? Well, remember I just mentioned this. It's when water runs over rocks such as limestone and the calcium and the magnesium ions dissolve. And that's really all you need to say there. 4B. Ooh, big question. Um, make sure you use English correctly, blah, blah, blah. Hard water can be softened by two different methods, using an iron exchange column and by adding washing soda. Describe how each method softens water and compare the advantages of these two methods. Don't panic when you see questions like that. Just make sure you split up your answer properly. Um, so first of all, get out of the way, just the description of how each method softens water. Well, they do it very similarly. Just remember that hard water, for your first mark, contains calcium and magnesium ions and that both methods of softening water remove these calcium and magnesium ions. So you've already got two marks. And now, really, rather than just talking about the advantages of the two methods, just really state what they are and what the differences are. So for the ion exchange column, remember that there's a resin which contains sodium ions and that these are exchanged with calcium and magnesium ions. The disadvantage here is that the sodium runs out, so you may need to replenish it. Um, but the good things about it is that it is a quick method and um, it's a continuous process if you're feeling jazzy and you want to add that. Now, if you add washing soda, what happens this time is that the sodium carbonate is added to the water and then the calcium and magnesium ions are precipitated out. Um, however, the problem with this is that um, it leaves a residue of precipitated carbonate in the water and it's also a batch process, whereas the other process was a continuous process. But if you're looking for advantages, you could say that it is an easy method to use. Now, I'm making this sound really complicated. I'm just going to summarise it. But what I want to really point out is that although it says compare the advantages of both methods, you really don't need to. Just say what you know about each, and I'm sure you'll be able to pull together enough marks. But I would say for the first two marks, just say that hard water contains calcium ions. For the second mark, that softening leads to removal of these ions. For the third mark, just discuss the ion exchange resin, um, the ion exchange column, sorry, by saying that it's a resin that contains sodium ions which are exchanged for calcium ions. Um, and then literally for the advantages, just say that it's a quick method and that it's continuous process done. Now talk about the sodium carbonate. I don't like this as much, so I'd probably say less on it. I would just pretty much say that it's an easy method to use, it's cheap, but that the disadvantage is that it's a batch process. And oh my goodness, you've said like 12 marks worth of things there. Water in Britain is taken from reservoirs to use as drinking water. What are the two main steps used to treat water from reservoirs? Give one reason for each step. Right, I know in my video I just said loads of different steps. Don't get confused and be like, oh, I can't remember any of them. Just pick out the two most simple steps you can remember. So first of all, just state filter. Why? In order to remove the solids. That's already two marks. And then just say add chlorine to reduce the number of microbes. And you've got four marks super easily and it's only taken like two lines of writing. 1B. Some people use water filters to treat water before drinking it. Water filters remove hardness from hard water. What is it in water filters that removes hardness from water? Well, remember, water filters have three components, silver, carbon, and the ion exchange resin. So there is the answer, ion exchange resin. 1B, part 2. Suggest why water filters used in the home contain particles of silver. Remember, that is to reduce or kill the microbes present. 1C. Pure water can be produced by distillation. Why is distillation not usually an economic method of treating water for drinking? Mainly because it's so flippin' expensive due to the high cost of energy involved.
1D. Drinking hard water has health benefits. This is such a nice question. State one health benefit of drinking hard water. Right, reduces heart disease. Good for teeth and bones. I've actually said three marks worth there. This is the last question I could find on this topic. A campsite has a spring where hard water flows out of limestone rock. A student compared the hardness of the spring water with two other samples of water. The student measured 20 centimetres cubed of water into a boiling tube. The student then added a drop of soap solution, shook the boiling tube for 10 seconds, looked to see if a permanent lather had formed. The student repeated the procedure until a permanent lather formed. The results are shown in the table. So we've got three different water samples from the spring, from the tap and distilled. And now we're looking at the number of drops of soap solution needed to form a permanent lather. Question one, calculate the correct mean for spring water. Right, so we need to look at spring water results. Test one was 13, test two 11, test three is six. Right, test three should be screaming anomaly at you because it's basically half the number of drops compared with the other two. So that means you need to ignore it. Remember when you're calculating the mean, you just need to add up the total number and then divide by the number of different results. So add 13 to 11, divide by 2, and your answer is 12. 4A part 2, what conclusion could the student make from her results? Use the results in the table to give a reason for your answer worth 2 marks. Right, if we look, we can see that the spring water is the hardest, and the reason why is because it takes the most drops of soap solution. You could have obviously given the opposite argument, which is that distilled water is the softest because it takes the fewest drops of soap solution. 4A part 3. Another student at the campsite boils some of the hard water in a pan. The inside of the pan becomes coated with a white solid. Explain how the white solid is produced. This is quite hard. Right, it's because the water contains calcium hydrogen carbonate and when you heat it, it decomposes, which means that it breaks down, if you don't want to write decomposes, to form calcium carbonate. And those are actually the three marks and that's the only thing they'll actually accept. So just write, water contains calcium hydrogen carbonate and decomposes to calcium carbonate. 4B, iron exchange columns can be used to soften hard water. Hard water goes in, there's a resin containing sodium ions, soft water comes out. Gosh, that's very helpful. Thank you, AQA. 4B, part 1, describe how an iron exchange column softens water. Right, remember that there are calcium ions or magnesium ions in the water and that these are exchanged for sodium ions in the resin. Believe it or not, I've actually said three marks worth of stuff there. So that was nice. 4B part 2, an iron exchange column is used for a few weeks. Sodium chloride solution now needs to pass through the iron exchange column. Suggest why. The reason is, is because you need to replenish the sodium ions in the resin because, remember, they run out. Um, yeah, nice. 4C, tap water in the UK is safe to drink because water companies add chlorine to sterilise the water. Suggest one argument for and one argument against water companies adding chlorine to sterilise water. Well, the argument for is to um, reduce the number of microbes. And the argument against is that it is toxic, so it could actually be harmful for human health. Right, I'm going to stop there. I hope you found this video helpful. And let me know if you have any other topic requests, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.